Chuck Wagon MTG is sponsored by BC Comics and Games. Thank you for joining us for another great deck tech video here on Chuck Wagon MTG. Today we bring you Standard Elves, a mono green build that focuses on getting as many elves onto the battlefield as possible, all while keeping them alive long enough for you to swing in for the win. So let's dive right in and check out the creatures that make up this mono green deck. We have four copies of Lanaware Elves, a 1-1 one, one elf for one green mana that can tap to add one grain to your mana pool. And we also have four copies of Narnum Renegade, a 1-2 elf for one green mana that has Death Touch and Revolt. Narnum Renegade enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn. The Lanaware Elves is simply there for early game ramp, while the Narnum Renegade forces your opponents to delay any kind of early game attacks or expend a removal spell that they're probably going to wish they had back come turn three. Next up, we have three copies of Servant of the Conduit, a 2-2 elf for one generic and one green mana, that when it enters the battlefield, you get two energy, and then you can tap it, pay an energy, and you get to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. We also have three copies of Rishgar, Pima Renegade, a 2-2 legendary elf for two generic and one green mana. When he enters the battlefield, you put a plus one, plus one counter on up to two target creatures you control, and then each creature you control with a counter on it has tap and add a green mana to your mana pool. These are just more early game ramps and then Rishkar can actually make your other creatures a little bit bigger so there's a bonus in that as well. Our next bit of mana ramping comes in the form of Marwyn the Nurturer, a 1-1 legendary elf for two generic and one green mana. When another elf enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on her and then you can tap her to add the amount of green mana equal to her power to your mana pool. This legendary elf doubles as both mana ramp and a progressively growing creature. Now for the stuff that we've been ramping for. We have four copies of Steel Leaf Champion, a 5-4 elf for three green mana, and Steel Leaf Champion can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Steel Leaf Champion is a huge body that can come out as early as turn two and is really, really hard to deal with that early in the game. The next one that we're ramping for is Cultivator of Blades, a 1-1 elf for 3 generic and 2 green mana that has Fabricate of 2. So when it comes into the battlefield, you either put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, or you could create 2 1-1 colorless servo artifact creature tokens. Then, whenever Cultivator of Blades attacks, you may have other attacking creatures get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is Cultivator of Blades' power. So essentially what we're looking to do is to just get as many elves on the battlefield as possible and then drop Cultivator of Blades. Most likely we're going to use the Fabricate of putting two plus one plus one counters on him and then next turn we're going to swing in with Cultivator of Blades and all of his friends and then even our little Lanoir elves, our little mana dorks are now going to be four fours swinging in. That's not to mention our Steel Leaf Champions which are just going to be ridiculous. If we can happen to get two Cultivator of Blades on the battlefield which is a long shot but if we can the math just gets absolutely ridiculous. Now, the biggest problem with most any type of ramping deck is keeping your creatures on the battlefield long enough for them to actually make a difference and get your big stuff out. And that's where our other spells come in. We have four copies of Blossoming Defense, an instant for one green mana. Target creature you control gets plus two, plus two, and gains hexproof until end of turn. We're also running three copies of Hapatra's Mark, an instant for one green mana. Target creature you control gains hexproof until end of turn, and then remove all negative one, negative one counters from it. And last but not least, we have four copies of Heroic Intervention, an instant for one generic and one green mana. Permanence you control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Between those three different instants, we should have enough to thwart off any kill spells early game, at least enough for us to get our mana out and do what we need to do early on. 
And just in case we happen to run into any decks that are really heavy on the removal, we have two copies of Shaper's Sanctuary, an enchantment for one green mana that says whenever a creature you control becomes a target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you get to draw a card. Our land base is pretty simple. We have two copies of Field of Ruin, a land that taps for one colorless mana, or we can pay two generic, tap it, and sacrifice it. We have to destroy a target non-basic land that an opponent controls, and then each player searches their library for a basic land, puts onto the battlefield, and then shuffles their library. This is essentially just for those pesky flip lands that uh, are still in standard right now. And then we have two copies of Scavenger Grounds, a desert that can be tapped to add one colorless mana to our mana pool, or we can pay two generic, tap it, and sacrifice a desert. We exile all cards from all graveyards. This is for those pesky decks that love to dig back into the graveyards. And then for basic lands, forests. We have 19 of them. For our sideboard, we have four copies of Adventurous Impulse, a sorcery for one green mana. Look at the top three cards of your library. You can reveal a creature or land card from among them, put it into your hand, and the rest go on the bottom of your library in any order. This is for any decks that we have to be going against that we feel might be outpacing us a little bit, and we need to dig a little faster for our creatures. Next, we have four copies of Naturalize, an instant for one generic and one green mana, destroy target artifact or enchantment. There's a very good chance this is going to be the most used card in our sideboard with the amount of enchantment removal, Bomat Couriers, and Sagas that we're seeing in standard right now. Next, we have four copies of Plummet, an instant for one generic and one green mana that destroys target creature with flying. Essentially, we have zero protection against flying in this deck, so this is just kind of a backup plan. And then, we have two copies of Sylvan Awakening, a sorcery for two generic and one green mana. Until your next turn, all lands you control become 2-2 elemental creatures with reach, indestructible, and haste. There's still lands. Now this one may seem a little bit odd, but if you can't get there in the early game and you're having trouble keeping your creatures on the board, this comes in real handy once you get Cultivator of Blades out. You can essentially swing in with a massive land army, kind of out of nowhere, that gets pumped by the Cultivator, plus they have Indestructible, so this can actually be really good. And lastly, we have one more copy of Shaper's Sanctuary, just for those decks that happen to be a little burn or kill spell heavy. Well, that wraps up our deck tech of Standard Elves. This is a fun deck that can get really out of control very quickly if left unchecked. And even if it is checked, we have enough hex proof in this deck to help prevent the deck from being checked. So... If you happen to play this deck, please let us know about it down in the comments, whether it be at a tournament or even at your kitchen table, we want to know. And then if you don't play this deck, but you just have some thoughts on it, we'd love to hear those thoughts as well. I want to thank you very much for watching this today. If you liked what you saw, do us a huge favor, click that like button, hit subscribe, be sure to hit the little bell notification icon so you can tell when we have new videos coming out, and be sure to share this with your friends, your family, your loved ones, and your pets, everyone could use a little more magic in their lives. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and as always, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch, Chuckwagon MTG. Now, if you could do me one last favor and check out this brief message about our sponsor. And hey, don't forget about our giveaways. We're currently giving away a free entry into the M19 pre-release at BC Comics and Games in Howell, Michigan, and we're also giving away an M19 bundle or bundle of your choice from standard, uh, I'll go ahead and put a link up here in the corner to that video that can get you entered. Chuckwagon MTG is sponsored by BC Comics and Games, now at one mega location to fill all of your gaming and comic needs. They have Magic the Gathering events every night of the week, as well as Warhammer, Pathfinder, Dungeons and Dragons Adventures League, Final Fantasy TCG, Pokemon, and Star Wars X-Wing events all throughout the week. They also have close to 100,000 comics on site. This is why I have personally made BC Comics and Games my home gaming store.